Hey, what's going on guys? Um, let's discuss in terms of where the markets are and potentially where we want to see. Uh, and let's see if there's any recession going on um, that is possible in the markets, right? Um, so let's look at the charts on here. Uh, once again, I want to start off looking at the spiders as the SPY. Uh, you have the SPY on here on the weekly. Uh, you also have the SPY, the spiders on the daily, right? Um, so a few things first you're noticing on here. Uh, let me just zoom in over here. Uh, it's like we are still under this whole region of, um, right, if you take a look on this one, uh, previous resistance, right, which went on becoming a support and now is acting as a resistance, right? Uh, what we're also seeing on here is these are long-term moving averages and these are short-term moving averages, right? So the long-term moving averages, um, I mean, they still haven't rolled over yet, right? So uh, I don't really see a potential of really a downturn yet. Um, the dailies, you know what? The dailies have turned over, but not on the weeklies. Uh, even if you try to look on the monthlies, right? Monthlies, we are still pretty, I mean, the, the spaces between the long-term moving averages still shows us a lot of long-term bias, right? But I really want to take a look on the... Um, I'm more concerned on the weekly ones. That's uh, my main frame of action. Uh, daily, I feel just a lot of noise, but uh, it's really good if you want to find uh, entries on a shorter time frame, uh, to just to manage on risk, right? I mean, if I'm still bullish on here, um, then my idea really would be uh, for these lows to start holding, right? Uh, I'll become more comfortable once this starts holding over this region, this over this 280 region. Uh, that's where my most comfort would be because I mean this one we're still in a big uh, Region where there's a lot of volatility, right? You see these big volumes. These volumes are nothing but um, volatility. So if you see If you want to read candle by candle taking a look at uh, when there was a big on the big drop You had a big volume, right? You had a big drop. You had a big volume uh, We try to do one bounce on here, right? A lot of people over here uh, try this is more of a short covering than actual buying uh, and the next leg you see on here um, if you go candle by candle again uh, any downturn you see an increase in volume right uh, it just keeps on increasing and over here was a pretty significant I mean they try to break it down here uh, on these two candles uh, it didn't really break down it actually started going up and this is I think this is where a lot of people got trapped because uh, a lot of people thought that, you know what, uh, we are probably going to start bouncing and start going over here. Uh, so you see a, an uptick in volume over here, right? The people were buying over here, but over here, this one was just people thought, you know what, now the markets are um, not going down anymore and now we're starting to go back. And hey, you know what, right after this, uh, we had a small inside day and people were still looking to go long. Uh, but at the end, we got this nice drip drop over here, right? So... Uh, this is where we are in the markets. Um, I mean, after this, we probably thought there's going to be one more downturn, but now we are seeing now nice pickup in volume is actually a good sign, right? They try to flush it down lower, uh, but we actually came back up and now some kind of consolidation. Uh, and once again, my idea really is uh, still stay in cash as much as possible. Uh, what I'm looking at really is for this level to break, right? Um, the easiest one would be for this level to break, right? So if you take a look on this one, in terms of what I'm anticipating is for it to two things. Number one, um, either for it to go up over here, there's small consolidations down here, right? Um, before it actually, maybe some, I would like it to go, I mean, consolidate more, frustrate a lot of people over here uh, before it actually starts going, right? That's one case scenario, right? Go on here, um, just have a bit more pullbacks and just frustrate everybody over here who has been buying, right? That's that would be the really ultimate thing to happen, right? Because um, I mean, if you see people over here, they got smoked out who were buying over here, people over here got smoked out. If there are more people over here getting smoked out, you know what, uh, when things this actually breaks, uh, it's gonna break pretty violently and that's where you can actually start buying into it. Uh, so that's one case scenario that I'm looking at. Um, let's take a look on the other ones. 
right? So that was one case scenario. The other case scenario that I'm looking at, you know what? The market really rips through uh, and does a retest, right? If it does a retest, it holds, uh, then that would be the second case scenario that I want to take, get into it, uh, and possibly for it to start trending higher, right? So that's another case scenario that I'm really looking at. Uh, so depending on how the market really shapes up, either it does a consolidation under it and starts breaking, or it actually breaks um, and then retests and then goes, right? So if you are looking to, uh, the way you really want to manage the risk on here really is, um, if you have a hundred, if you have let's say a hundred thousand uh, dollars, once it starts going back up here, right? Let's do this over there. I mean, if it breaks, you want to get half your position in here, right? So maybe fifty thousand dollars you want to get in, um, and see if it can actually start going. All right, because there are a lot of times when it starts breaking, it actually starts going as well. Right, so you really don't want to miss the move on there. Um, we also want to have some money aside that you know what, if it were to come uh, and back test it and it holds, that's where you want to really load in, uh, and now you know where the base is, right? So now you can actually try to play this move. Um, and the other scenario really is, you know what, if it does the scenario one that I mentioned, which is go up here, uh, consolidates uh, down here, consolidates, consolidates, and then starts ripping through, right? Uh, this, as, if this is the kind of scenario, then that's when you can actually load up on all your full shares um, and just trade it based on the risk down here, right? So two scenarios on how do you actually deploy capital. Uh, but at this point of time, I don't see any recession coming on here. I mean, we are down quite a bit, right, for the year. So for the year, we are not down that much. I mean, if you take a look on this uh, weekly, I mean, January 20, so January 1st, we are sitting over here, 268. So we didn't really go anywhere. I mean, we had this up move, down move, and then it's a lot more volatility on here, which is kind of understandable. Uh, but has been pretty much gone nowhere. I mean, we started in the market over here 268, we were selling at 273. So not a lot of move yet in the markets. Uh, but if you take a look on the, um, on the, on just intra-year, right? Intra-year, we have seen this big move from 285 uh, down to 254. So that's a pretty big move. Um, and you also saw a dip of 293 down to 260, right? So that's about, uh, 30 point move on say three so about 10 percent move down here right so pretty violent moves right 280 to 250 so another 30 point move 30 point move um, so pretty vigorous uh, but you know what you want to manage your risk um, and if you want to trade longs you can definitely take a look at the SSOs uh, which is one of the ones you can take a look at um, it moves twice the S the spiders uh, if you want to take a look at what's happening underneath the markets um, let's try to do this. Uh, if you want to see individual sectors um, as I mentioned you know what the healthcare uh, from previous ones let's try to zoom this uh, the healthcare is still one of the strongest ones out here which is holding up pretty nicely uh, the utilities uh, going nowhere energy is just gonna get destroyed um, XLB not going nowhere consumer staples holding up this range, uh, financials going nowhere, industrials going nowhere, uh, tech is holding on, uh, and so is the consumer discretionary, right? So the consumer discretionary and the techs are holding on, it's not that really, they're really falling apart, but once, uh, what I don't want to see on here, whether it in terms of spiders or Q really is, um, what I don't really want to see is, you know what, it starts bouncing, let's remove this, um, if it does bounce and then it has a big fake, uh, now that would be all bets are off and you don't want to stay long anymore. But if you can see some kind of consolidation under this region and starts trending up, that would be the best case scenario because at the end of the day, as I mentioned on the monthly front, we are still pretty uh, bullish, right? I mean, in terms of how the way it's being structured on the monthly, uh, we still don't see any kind of um, downtrend on here, right? At least on the mo long-term moving averages. Weekly, weakening, but monthly we are still pretty strong with, I mean, these are not even turning over. Right. So, guys, if you like the video, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, thank you.